Hello everyone and a big welcome to everyone. I hope you're all well and uh, ready to have a look at the pullback of K forms. All right, so the pullback of a K form transfers geometric information between manifolds via a smooth map. It re-expresses the form of the coordinates of the original manifold, showing how it transforms under the map and how it interacts with vectors and volumes in the new space. Let's have a look at a diagram. So let's go back and look at the case of um, one forms. And so as not to distract anyone, I'll remove that. All right, so we have manifold M and another manifold N. We have a point P on the manifold M and we have a map. F is a map from M to N, so it takes points on M and maps them to points on N. One such point is the point P here, which is mapped under F to the point F of P. Now at this point P, we also have a vector V. All right, and that exists in the tangent space to the manifold M at the point P. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to push this vector V forward. All right using the Jacobian matrix D evaluated at the point P, acting on F, right, acting on the vector V. So it pushes the vector V here forward to this vector here. And we denote the push forward as F lower asterisk at the point P of V. All right, so this map here is a map from the tangent space to manifold M at the point P to the tangent space to the manifold N at the point F of P under this map F. Right, and this is the Jacobian matrix evaluated at the point P. Now, coincident with point P and with point F of P are the cotangent or dual spaces. All right, now, they lie here in the same location here, but for the sake of clarity, and so my diagram does not get too messy, I separate the two on the screen or on the page here. All right, that's the only reason they're separated. No other reason. So this cotangent space, which we denote by the upper asterisk, so T tangent space to the manifold or cotangent space to the manifold N and the point F of P, the upper asterisk here indicates cotangent or dual space. At F of P, it has a one form at F of P. And what we're wondering and, and have in the past videos is under the map F being able to pull it back to a one form over here. And the pullback of this one form shown here under the map F, the pullback is indicated with an upper asterisk, the push forward with a lower asterisk here and the pullback with an upper asterisk. So under the map F, we pull this omega, this one form back to the original manifold, the domain manifold, if you like. All right, and here is the cotangent or dual space to M at the point P. Upper asterisk here indicating cotangent or dual at the point P. All right, so that's the point here. We want to look at the pullback now of K forms. This diagram showing the pullback of a one form here. I want to um, indicate how that operates. Now, in the past videos, I've done the pullback of the one form, pullback of two forms, pullback of three forms. And the beautiful thing about the pullback of one form is that method then just gets applied twice if you look in the pullback of two forms, three times if you pull back of three forms. So basically in, in a form like a three form, for instance, or a two form where you have a wedge product of two one forms or a wedge product of three one forms, then the pullback of the whole two form or the pullback of the whole three form is just the pullback of the wedges of the individual one forms pulled back. So you, you do the pullback of the one forms and wedge them together. And that's the same as the pullback of the whole three form or two form, or whatever you're dealing with. And it'll be the same with the K form as well. So let's move on and have a look at that. Just start with some definitions and so on. So the pullback of a K form, let F be a map from M to N, be a smooth map between manifolds M and N and let omega be a K form on N. The pullback of the K form omega by F is denoted F, F upper asterisk omega and is defined to be a K form on M. If P belongs to M, 
then for any V1, V2, VK tangent vectors that belong to the manifold M at the point P, tangent vectors of P, the pullback F upper asterisk of omega acts on these tangent vectors in this format here. All right, so the pullback of omega acting on these vectors is the same as the K form on N acting on these push forward vectors. These are the push forward vectors. Uh, in previous videos, I tended to use a capital D for the push forward, being the Jacobian matrix. But I think the idea of a, a differential is a little bit more intuitive if I use the lowercase d rather than the capital D. So this is the Jacobian matrix at, at the point P, and meant to be evaluated at the point P, um, of F acting on V1. So these are the push forward vectors. These are each of these vectors V1 on M push forward to N. All right, and here's their form here. And then the, the K form on N acts on each of these vectors. It takes K of these vectors because it's a K form and returns a scalar. Now here, omega F of P is the value of the K form. Omega at the point F of P belongs to N. Lowercase d, suggestive of a differential, instead of me using my normal capital for this. D, F subscript P is a map from the tangent manifold to uh, tangent space to the manifold M at the point P to the tangent space to the manifold N at the point F of P is the differential or push forward of the map F, which maps tangent vectors at P belongs to M to tangent vectors at F of P belongs to N. All right, so explanation of the formula. So pull back of one forms. Let's go back to one forms again. Um, just going over old ground. So the pullback of one form omega is obtained by applying the differential DFP to a tangent vector. Um, in the videos previously, I've tended to use capital D, subscript P, and then F, but this is more suggestive perhaps of a differential, the lowercase d rather than capital. This is the base case where the pullback of a one form omega under F gives a one form F asterisk omega on M. And it acts on a tangent vector, V subscript P, belongs to the tangent space of manifold M at P, so the tangent vector at the point P, as F upper asterisk omega at P acting on V is the same as omega F at P, that's the one form at the um, target manifold N, acting on the push forward vector here. So these two things are equal. All right? And that's the important thing about the pullback. You'll see how that's done shortly, or you'll see a reminder of it again. If you've watched the previous videos, you'll know what I'm talking about. So the pullback of a k-form. So the pullback of a k-form generalizes this idea. A k-form takes k tangent vectors as input and produces a scalar, real number. The pullback, f asterisk omega, takes k tangent vectors, v1, v2, vk, belongs to the tangent space of the manifold of p, and first pushes them forward using the differential dfp at the point, df at the point p, which gives vectors in the tangent space of the manifold N at F of P. Okay, differential, remember these pushes the vectors forward to give you the push forward vector at N at the point F of P. Then the K form omega at F of P is applied to these push forward vectors. All right, so geometrical, geometrically, and in more intuitive terms, the pullback operation transports the form omega from the target manifold N back to the domain manifold M. A pullback is crucial in differential geometry because it allows us to pull differential forms from one manifold to another via a smooth map F, preserving their geometric and algebraic properties. So application of the formula, how do we do it? Well, let's start having a look at that. So given a smooth map F from M to N between two manifolds M and N and a K form omega on N, the pullback F upper asterisk omega is a K form on M. If the K form omega is is written as, okay, this is on N, omega is Q of U1, U2 up to UK, DU1 wedge DU2, wedge so on, wedge DUK, all right? Uh, so the wedge of um, K1 forms, DUI, where Q, U1, U2, UK is a scalar function of the coordinates, U1, U2 up to UK on N, and the differentials, remember this is on N, the target matter. DU1, DU2, DUK are the one forms on N. Then the pullback of omega by F is given by, we want to pull it back now to the domain manifold, the first manifold, the original one. F upper asterisk omega, this is a pullback, becomes Q of F of X1, X2, X to N, 
times the pullback of each of the individual one forms wedged together. So the pullback of the whole thing is the pullback of the wedge product of the individual one forms, each of them one pullback. So the pullback of the whole thing is the wedge product of the individual pullback vectors, pullback one form, sorry, F asterisk du1, wedge F asterisk du2, wedge, wedge up to F asterisk duk. All right, so F asterisk dui represents the pullback of the one form dui under F, which can be computed as a differential of F's components, i.e. dfi x1, x2, xn. You'll see how that is. If you look back to previous videos, you'll see how that works as well. The scalar function q of f of x1, x2, xn is now expressed as a function of the x coordinates, the coordinates of the domain m. Because remember, on n, the coordinates were the u's, and on m, the coordinates are the x's. So to pull it back, we take the scalar function back by expressing it in terms of the component functions f, x1, x2, xn. All right? is now expressed as a function of the x coordinates, the coordinates of the domain m through the map f. Now, in the previous videos, I've shown you how that's done, and what I mean by that. The wedge products, f star du1, wedge f star du2, wedge by wedge f star duk, are wedge products of the pulled back one forms, which involve terms like dx1, dx2, dxn. You'll see how that is, or well, you've already seen it if you watch watched the previous videos. All right, so interpretation f, Upper asterisk to ui is dfi of x1, x2, xn is computed via the chain rule. So df asterisk to ui is dfi dx1, dfi dx2 times the differential dx1, dx2 plus plus df partial fi over partial xn times dxn. So the pullback of the k form is a new k form on m expressed in terms of the differentials dx1, dx2, dxn on m. All right. So uh, so for the so if, if we're talking about the pullback of du1, then it'll be partial f1, partial x1 times dx1 plus partial f1, partial x2, dx2 plus so on and so on plus partial f1, partial xn, dxn. All right. And then du two, du3, and so on and so on. All right, let's look at now an example of applying this. So let's explore a detailed example of the pullback of a two form in the context of general relativity, specifically in the transformation between a Schwarzschild and Eddington Finkelstein coordinates. Well, Schwarzschild coordinates, CT R theta phi, the Schwarzschild metric describes space time around a non-rotating spherically symmetric mass M. All right. And the line element or space time interval is given by this. ds squared is that. Okay. Um, Eddington Finkelstein coordinates, V uh, theta phi. The Eddington Finkelstein coordinates are introduced by transforming the time coordinate T to V, where V is CT plus R star, lower asterisk, and R lower asterisk is the tortoise coordinate defined as R star or asterisk is R plus all of this. All right, so that's the tortoise coordinate. And these coordinates, the metric becomes this form here. All right, or I should say line in element space time interval, but it is also called the metric. All right, now consider the electromagnetic magnetic field two form in Schwarzschild coordinates, which may be written as this the electromagnetic field two form, ERC dt wedge dr plus B theta d theta wedge d phi where ER is the radial component electric field and B theta is the polar magnetic field. Now, we want to pull back this two form F from the Schwarzschild coordinates, CTR theta phi, to the Eddington Finkelstein coordinates, VR theta phi. Right? Just notice too, see the R theta phi and R theta, they don't change under this transformation. It's just CT and V that undergo the transformation. C, of course, is the speed of light. All right, so let's apply the coordinate transformation. V is CT plus R star. We need to compute the pullback of the differential one form CDT and DR. All right, for CDT, CDT from this, if you would take the differentials of this here, we will get um, DV minus DR. If I um, take the 
tortoise coordinate over to the other side, I'll have V minus R star equals CT. The differential of those will be CDT is DV minus DR asterisk. All right, so we get CDT is DV minus DR asterisk is DV minus, and if I take the differential of um, R, I'm going to produce this object here. I've not included that here for the sake of this video because it's not really the point of it. All right, uh, the formula R star was on the previous slide. If you take the differential of that, remember you had the R plus and then you had the uh, other part there. Uh, let me just remind you, see here, you have this log term, natural log here. All this, if we take differential that, we're going to get dr here. Do a derivative here times dr, collect like terms, you end up with this object down here, dr. So we have dv minus this times dr. All right, but dr, d theta, and d phi, these remain unchanged under the transformation. Now the term ERCT, CDTT, wedge CDT, wedge dr becomes ER CDT wedge DR is ER. Remember DT was replaced by this DV minus DR asterisk wedge DR. And that was equal to, uh, expanding that now, is ER DV wedge DR. So far so good. Minus here. Minus ER DR star wedge DR. Well, we can write that out as next line down. This term comes down here. Minus ER times. And we're going to remove this tortoise coordinate here and place this object in its place, and we have dr wedged with itself. You know, we know that must be zero, okay? The differential of a coordinate wedged with itself is zero. So we now have just this first term survives, er, e subscript r, dv wedged dr. All right, the term b theta, d theta wedged d phi remains unchanged since theta and phi are not affected by the transformation. So we just keep that term. Now after applying the pullback, all right, from Schwarzschild coordinates is pulled back to Eddington Finkelstein coordinates. The electromagnetic field two form in Eddington Finkelstein coordinates is now F is, so F is our two form, is now this object here. Remember, this part was unchanged because those coordinates were, effect, were unaffected by this transformation by the Eddington Finkelstein uh, transformation coordinate change. All right, so we've just got this. Now, the electric field term ER, CDT, wedge DR, and Schwarzschild coordinates is pulled back to ER, DV, wedge DR in Eddington Finkelstein coordinates. This reflects the change in how the electric field is observed when switching from CT to V with the coordinates DV and DR mixing space and time. All right, the magnetic field term that remains the same as the angular coordinates theta and fire are unaffected by the transformation. So this example illustrates, um, I can return that perhaps now. So this example illustrates how the pullback of a two form, in this case, the electromagnetic field two form, adapts to a change in coordinates while preserving the physical structure of the field, such as the relationship between electric and magnetic components. All right, I hope that's useful and helpful now. I think, um, that might be for now uh, enough on the case of the pullback and um, looking at uh, everything from the pullback of a one form uh, up to a K form. You might notice in one of the push forward sections, I did a pullback of a zero form, which is just a function. So if you go back through the push forward videos, you'll find an example there of a uh, pullback of a function from one manifold to another. I hope all this is helpful. If it is, um, and if you want to, please uh, click the like button and subscribe if you will. Thank you very much for your time and for watching. I do hope it really is useful to you. Um, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye.